Hi, I'm Deb Brown with Building Possibility and Savior.town. I have this distinct pleasure of having Ted Kilmer online, who is someone that I've never met in real life, which happens in my industry quite a bit, but I really look forward to that happening. Ted, can you give me a one minute bio? <laughs> That's uh, hard, uh, right? <laughs> um, I'm celebrating my 50th anniversary in showbiz. And that includes having been a puppeteer, having done uh, PR for Broadway, having produced festivals in large towns and small towns. And my love, quite frankly, is the concept of uh, the commons. And you very well know what that is. I do indeed. I do. But let's explain it to our listeners. Explain what that means, the commons. Well, let's, 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 let's go back in time a little bit. Okay. Now, it's very difficult to do that right now because of all the rifts going on in the United States. But let's take a small town in New England, for example, or, or probably truly across the country, as, although they became bigger and bigger towns, there was once upon a time a place where people gathered. And in that place, which even now, uh, the Boston Commons is the Boston Commons. Around that place would be the mercantile, the church, the school, uh, probably the city center. And I've always been fascinated by how people come together in spaces like that and share it. Gotcha. I've got to interrupt you just a minute. You can hear my two dogs behind me moving curtains around like <laughs> they're behind the curtain. And what are their names? It is Shirley and Buster. Shirley and Buster. And they're okay, two. It sounds like a sitcom to me. I know, right? So I know you're a speaker like this. You've got to stay back in your seat. Because oh, I keep sorry. cutting your head off with the with the camera, and, and you have a lovely. That's okay. I really head of don't hair. want people to see this dreadful head of hair. And there they go, off to see the wizard, my doggies. Ah. All right, so I have this image of the Boston Commons with all the um, local stores around the the square, if it were yes. or around in the Midwest. There's generally a courthouse in the middle of the square. Um, so maybe around the courthouse. Yes, I know that very well from Salt Lake City, for example. Yeah, wow, they've got some beautiful places there for sure. So I'm in this commons, now what? What what happens? What, what do you like to do there? Why what do it, I like to do yeah, there? Yeah, why is it appealing to you? Tell me why it's appealing to you. What is very amazing to me is because um, commons, the concept of commons in and of itself is, and the concept of gathering is people are no different. I think this is why my interest in street has always been, is because if you go down to the courthouse and you walk into the courthouse, nobody necessarily knows why you're there, if you're rich and poor, where you've come from, where you're going, what you're doing, and I that just has always fascinated me. You told me a story once about Oh. Uh, I know you, well, you told me quite a few stories. So oh. you fell. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. That's fine. This oh, is a part of gadget, live recording. Here, let's see if this will do this. Okay. I told right. you a story once about what you did about how you went to a community and you actually did live windows. Um, and you did some really cool stuff with performance. <laughs> um, <laughs> share uh, that story with our listeners, would you? I was uh, uh, in in my festival phase. And I had the, I at that time was producing a festival for, it was for five years in lower Manhattan. Okay. Which had not ever had a festival before. And I took over one square mile and we did it all. And it became international. And 
and I was invited uh, through that to join a festival in Manchester in the United Kingdom. Okay. Fabulous town. Unbelievably uh, uh, community-based. Uh, uh, you, you, you go there and, and you're tilling the soil in the community garden within 24 hours or you're not even accepted. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, I love that city. And I got an invitation from a festival there that was street theater because I specialize in that kind of talent. And, and I arrived off the plane and was taken immediately to a dressing room. I had no idea, no idea. Taken immediately to a dressing room and going, okay, what's going on? Where's my hotel? Oh no, no hotel, not right now. And I was handed in that dressing room amidst, oh, probably 30 or 40 other actual street performers, and I'm not a street performer. And I was told, here's your outfit, here's your costume, and here's where you're going. And here's what you're going to do. And I, I'm sorry, I'm intrepid. If, if you were to do that to me tomorrow, I'd be, yes, Deb, I, I'm ready, I'll try. And so the costume was a very old uh, Russian military uniform, okay? Already I'm going, oi, 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 oi. And then I was told that when I got in the window I was going, where I had to perform for an hour, that I was to do a strip tease. Okay. Well, that's what I said. <laughs> and, and, and so it turned out that the window I was in was on a, a, a it was on a major byway in a corner store. Okay. So it was where a lot of traffic was, both cars and people. And it turned out, and, and there were 30 other windows going on. It wasn't just me. So it, it turned out that it was a young men's shop. And at that time, I was about 40 years old, I think. You know, not, not necessarily in my prime and certainly not prepared, having just come off an airplane with four martinis or whatever. And, and so I went, okay, let's go for it. And um, I, I told the kids in the shop, I said, look, I, I can't dance and do this unless you turn up the music. And they, and, and they knew, by the way, that down the street were some women doing the same thing. They were like, oh no, wrong. And I told them to turn it up. And, and I actually, it's very hard to look like you're stripping for an hour where you're <laughs> taking clothes part, part off, part on, part this, part that. And, um, and within that hour, and I must say, it's strenuous work. All these guys who do this for a living, it's damn strenuous work. And so I, I had to look like I was taking part off on this side and taking others on to get it back so I could look like I was taking. And, and we stopped traffic. Uh, there was so much cars out front, it was hysterical. And then people, women, kept running into the store and sticking dollars in my pants. <laughs> All right, we had to do this for two days. So I did the first day and you know, the, the kids in the store, they were all young men, I would say probably 20 years old. They didn't get it. And, and, and so I left for the day, okay, fine. Went back the next day. 
blew my mind because <laughs> I, I got ready to go and the boys overnight had recorded a whole series of musical pieces for me to dance to with with intermittent women going oh, oh, oh. but they didn't tell me no they didn't tell me now mind you i i can laugh at anything i can laugh at anything and it's really hard for me to keep from laughing and i knew that i wasn't supposed to be there laughing so i'm just i i'm just i'm 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 bursting out of all of this and, and so yeah they actually bought into it they got together and said oh yeah he's here for us he's for here for our store he's here for our community because they all they were kids from the neighborhood they weren't trucking into like uh work at starbucks or something they 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 were very they they were townies and and we had a ball so the really exciting part of all of this is and i don't know if anybody else who did windows although i'm still close to some of them um i went back to them to thank them personally for being involved in this cultural experience. I mean, they're shop boys, let's be real. They don't have this happening to them, nor did they ask for it. They had no clue. They just knew something was gonna happen in the window. And I went back and I said, you know, you guys were really, really good sports. So can I meet with you at the end of the week and I'll take you for drinks at the nearby pub. And we, we did. And every single one of them showed up. Wow. And what was the most endearing part is one, a very shy kid, probably 18 or 19 years old, just said, um, I write poetry. And I was like, Wow, that's really cool. Well, would you read it? Of course I'll read it. And and he gave me what he wrote. And in that one moment, this stupidity, this craziness, everything in the window that happened that a cultural institution created, that a community bought into, that a smaller community bought into, that suddenly was this one connection and i'll never forget that because he walked away feeling much 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 better about himself than he ever would otherwise is that the story i told you or is there another one it is, no, that's to the tell story, you? exactly <laughs> the story told me and and it's the effect that we don't know that we have uh, each of us on other people i mean it's not just the the outgoing folks that have this effect it's everybody you never know whose day you're going to make you never oh, know absolutely and the and the reality is and this is something i've always believed in in my lifetime doing what i do it's not my ownership it's theirs i let them have it and i that sounds weird, but well, you could take it either way. I let them have it. Yes. It was like, okay, guys, turn up the sound, do what you do. I'll do what I've been told to do, but have fun with it. And hopefully it, we'll all have fun with it. And, and they embraced it and said, oh, all right. Oh, you came in our door. And now we can boast because you came in our door. And what we thought we'd have that was down the street ah, didn't happen. That's awesome. And I'm willing to bet what happened down the street with the women was just as much fun. Totally oh yeah. Fun. Well, I, I actually, much fun. I have a video of all the windows 
it, uh, it still has to be translated from VHS or whatever it's on right. on tape uh, somewhere stacked away and someday it'll, it'll surface on YouTube, but by then I'll be 80. What else you got to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I have a lot to do, my dear. I know, I know. You know, I just turned 65, and it just seems like every day is filled with, what do I want to get done in my lifetime? What am I thinking about? Who am I going to be? At 65, I'm still thinking, who am I going to be? Isn't that just wild? I guess it never stops, does it? I I never thought of who I want to be. I mean, you know, the the reality is in college I was supposed to study and become a minister. <laughs> of course, the reality is people who study to become ministers become actors. People who are actors become ministers. It's 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 always the case. So I should have known better. And I, I, I actually quit college in my junior year. I said, I've had enough. I learned all of this in my high school years. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to see the world. What are we talking about? And within meh, two weeks, I was on an airplane to Atlanta. If I, I, at that time, was going to school at Rutgers in New Jersey. I was on an airplane to Atlanta, Georgia, to perform uh, a marionette show, which I learned in four days and was on tour. And I've been in show business ever since. That's awesome. Go figure. So, puppets, huh? Yeah, I I was I, I was the baby of 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 the family back then. Bill Baird was still alive, as we know from uh, uh, TV shows, and uh, Henson was still alive, and I know the family. Um, and I just, I left college, and somebody said, call Baird's studio, which was in New York, and it turned out they were doing auditions. And I went... I got on a bus and I went and went to their apartment where they were doing interviews and um, Vincent Anthony, who's now the executive director of the Puppetry Museum in Atlanta, which is a brilliant, brilliant collection. If anybody ever travels there, they should go. Um, it has some puppets that I've saved actually, actually over life. Um, and I I learned marionettes in four days, and I was on tour for two and a half years after that. Marionettes, that's kind of a cool word. That's a little more classy than puppets, I think. <laughs> well, they're different. Marionettes are a particular kind of puppet. Are they but wooden? I've had the are the marionettes wooden? Of, I've had the opportunity of, of, of operating many different kinds. Excellent. So you went from maybe being a pastor to being a, a puppeteer. A well, yeah, puppeteer. somehow, somehow the letter P leads into everything I've done. So puppetry, press agent, which I fell into. Uh, and, and then, uh, of course, doing all the festival stuff. But all of that has been street theater and things like that. That's awesome. so promoter, producer, it's the P word again. And so I kind of giggle when I look at, well, okay, we usually have about four lives. And, and so what's the next P word? And well, you, you go figure. Well, preacher, <laughs> pastor. <laughs> and, <laughs> Maybe you'll get there I, yet, I, right? No, I keep writing them out and going, no, 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 no. I'm too old. There you go. So originally we were going to talk about um, oh mapping and no this is all <laughs> part of it because for me this is all part of it it's storytelling it's very much part of it yeah it's it's when you it's, so for for I found this I received this email from um, this map group that I follow they make their own maps it's uh, yes which I love and travel um, is the name of that group and it got me thinking about how could we do that kind of thing in our community as a project? How could we better represent the things we love in our small towns by mapping it out? 
No, I'm not talking about drawing lines and writing down the names no, of the no. streets. No, no, no. So no, I, I, I think part of the reason of my my interest in mapping has be, been because of my involvement in in what I call the vernacular arts. In other words, okay. I've always been involved in vaudeville, circus, street performance things that are you don't go to an opera house for you don't go to a broadway theater for yes i've done broadway but quite frankly i'm known for doing the weird things as opposed to the regular things and 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 so there's this concept of street just a simple concept of street and that's led me over the years to realize that we don't pay attention very much to it. And partially it's because the United States was never created for anybody to walk in the street. It was created for cars. We know that. And Jane Jacobs made us kind of rethink all of that. And that goes back to the whole concept of commons and gathering and, and knowing our neighbors. And, and what I found is right now is there's this amazing trend. I mean, it came up with this project that you discovered, but it's all over the place. Now there are maps being exhibited in major museums. There are maps being done by people. There are walks, and I've had the pleasure of leading some really fun walks, but like, there's this woman in California, and I'm sorry, I don't have notes here, but All right. who does who does tours that are based on smelling the neighborhood? Just smelling the neighborhood, just going around and going, oh, well, yeah, what is in the garbage and what is in the garden? And it's just amazing to me that very quietly with everything else that's going on in the world, individuals, sometimes collectives, have begun to realize that what's right there under your nose, so to speak, is as important as the rest of the world and why not find it, discover it, enjoy it. So, Whenever I travel, for example, my, my motto, which I know is, is stolen from some places, whenever you get to a Y, W-H-Y, in the road, take it. And so when I, for example, my first time in Mexico City, of course, you stay near the Socolo, near the center. You don't have any other clue. It's a huge, huge, huge town. And they said, and the, the desk said, don't go that way. Well, you tell me, don't go that way. And I'm sorry, but I go that way. Right. And within two, three blocks from where I was staying was this amazing plaza that still had um, printing presses. They had outdoor printing presses where they would make handmade cards for you and people would go there to to buy a, a congratulations card or whatever and all the type was set and everything but it's outdoors in the plaza and they were all you know all the way around the plaza and i was just mesmerized and there was not an american there at all i remember quite frankly that um there was a bunch of whistling going on and i got it right away that they were signaling that I was a mark. So, you know, like Liza Minnelli in Cabaret raises her hand. Yes. To say, oh, I did that. And the whistling stopped. And, and I spent the rest of the day having a grand time there, but I wasn't supposed to go there. Yeah, don't well, go there. Why? You know, what, we're not supposed to go to these new places and, one, discover them, but also understand how there can be a conversation between them and us. It, you know, 
we're not all that different. No, we're not at all. This is very true. So, and so that what that's kind of how I found uh, because of my love of all of this uh, connection in terms of the commons and community and neighborhoods is how I found you. Thank you. I'm and, so glad you and, found us both. Yes. And the reality is, it, there would be no reason necessarily that we'd be conversing now, except that I just was so. I just was intrigued by your way of going into a community, choosing to go into a, a smaller community and saying, okay, guys, let, let's do something. And, what do you want? And, yeah. and, and you're going to, you're going to do it. Cause I ain't. And I love that because I've done that all my life. I mean, my, my, my um my festival in lower manhattan which was called the buskers fair which lasted five years until there was a new administration that decided it was useless oh three hundred fifty thousand dollar festival a year from the get-go that combined the plazas of 18 different locations including the world trade center at that time yeah, the, those towers were still there. Um, I just did it because I was I was working for the Lower Manhattan uh, Marketing Association and working with them, and um, they said let's have a festival. And then they wanted to do a jazz festival. I said, well, there's one already in New York. Well, let's do this. Uh, no, sorry, there's one already. In New well, what do we should do, Ted? <laughs> I said, well, let's take to the streets. And they were like, are you crazy? I said, <laughs> yes. And, and they gave me six months and to do a presentation. And I remember the presentation. It was at uh, then Smith Barney in, a, in a, one of those vacuous meeting rooms. And so I went in and I purposely unplugged everything. And I figured out that I could operate from the lectern like the blinds and everything else. And I had, I think it was attended by about 40 people from, oh, big wigs, Port Authority, you name it, Chase Manhattan Bank. Uh, and I, I'm sorry, I don't come across this presenter for any of them and so I suggested that we really do a street theater festival like they do in Europe oh no advertising no big names on banners none of that people are just going to wander the streets and they're going to run into it and you know i had faces like this and then um i had to do a presentation with slides except that nothing worked so i started pushing buttons and the blinds went up and down on the windows and the day you know things were everything was wrong and i got the, these people laughing and I got them laughing enough that I could say, oh, I'm sorry, something's not plugged in. And I actually crawled under one of their legs into the center of the square where they were sitting, where the plugs were, so I could plug it back in. The next day, I had a check from Smith Barty for $35,000. Why? Because they got it. And I think one of my the favorite favorite moment for me in my five years and then I was let go because they decided that they were going to present stars and all downtown after we had established all this um my favorite moment was walking down Wall Street and in front of me headed towards Federal Hall 
were two stilt walkers. And behind them were two women, probably in their 60s or whatever, who were down there shopping. And one of them turned to the other, and I'll never forget this. She said, what is this? And the other woman is turned and said, well, that's the busker's fair. I'll never, ever let that go ever in my life. No, you know, I could have, I could have, I could have died and been happy right then and there because that's exactly what we should see on every street everywhere. Whatever is happening, you could just say, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, that's us. That's us. That's, that's, that's what what's do. going on. And it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Have and fun. it's fine. Yeah. So let's get back to maps because I have this idea. Um, <laughs> You have way too many ideas with your brain, so I, I appreciate that. <laughs> there are people in my life. I'm trying that say... to throw ideas away so that I can <laughs> I can focus because, as you well know, I don't. Which I love about you. So, <laughs> so I think we should. I think we should invite people to draw maps of their community. Well, of their here... neighborhood, their block, where their friends live, whatever they want to do. I think we should do that. It, it, it's a very interesting thing. Um, uh, about, I'd say four years ago, maybe now, um, the Department uh, of Arts in Connecticut gave me a grant and, and it was to do walks. And what I did was, and and it was, I just applied because I, all I said was, I want to take people on walks because they don't see anything. They don't have a clue what's next door. They don't. I know. It, it's I get it. mind boggling to me, mind boggling to me what little they know about just their four blocks of their neighborhood. And so I got a grant to do walks and we did several in, in Connecticut in various towns. And I, and, and people were, uh, uh, kept notes and all that kind of stuff. Some drew maps, some wrote notes and all of that kind of stuff. It never evolved into, um, a collection, which it could have. And, and it, it's come down to, to the point where I, I just keep going. I I really would love to. S I'd love to see this congeal into a larger project. So, so that was then a couple of years ago. But I and then that reminded me that when I was in my twenties, through a grant from the New Jersey State the Arts Commission of New Jersey, I was at a elementary school and I did take little kids, I think they were five, fifth graders, and we walked around their uh, neighborhood, the neighborhood of the school. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can do that in, anymore, but walked around the neighborhood of the school and they actually chose parts of the neighborhood that they liked and they created uh, a communal map and then what we did was we went into um their gymnasium and we took the communal map and we made it 3d using whatever we could find so for example the woods we hung green crepe paper from the ceiling and we had a fan running so the paper would go back and forth. For the bridge, we got, you know, the balance beam. We sure. put it over a big thing of water and we had kids make fish because it was a neighborhood that was near where people went fishing. And we had all of that and not nobody in the school was allowed to know what we were doing. The teachers come because they've been invited to go on an adventure created by the children. And so they got to walk through this map of their own neighborhood. 
I'll, I'll never forget the teachers having to go through a, we took a refrigerator box to be a, a drainage tunnel. <laughs> they had to crawl through it in the, in, oh, I loved it. I loved it. And, and so a whole lot of my life has been this idea of what's around you, how to perceive it, how to take it in, how to toss it back and how to take ownership of it. So, you know, we practice the idea friendly method at yes. Sacred.town. And for those people that are listening, that it's really simple. You, you take a big idea and you gather your crowd around that big idea. And then you have to build some connections to accomplish this idea. And then you begin to take small steps on your way to the big idea. Um, so I have this idea that I would love to see what some of our listeners, some of our followers, some of our members um, would draw of their community or a portion of their community. Maybe it's one block downtown. Maybe it's up by the highway. Who cares? It's whatever they want to put together to draw the map, the visual map, not the streets lined out, but no, the things no, that not appeal not to the them lined out. about that area. I'd love to see. That's a small step. So the connections are, I know how to reach those folks, right? Because I write an email to them every week. Um, that's one way, that's a small step. Um, another small step is I interviewed you, which we're doing right now. Of course, we've talked about this ahead of time. Um, my, I would love to, I know this is a time of COVID and it's a little bit harder to go outside, but what if you did it from your, from your mind? What if you sat down with an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and drew what you remember or what you'd like to see about one block in your community? But isn't this interesting anyway, because folks are beginning to be asked that or suggested that because of the situation of quarantining and yeah. all of that. And I seem to remember way back when, like when I was a little kid, isn't that what we did anyway? Except we don't have to do it anymore because we have these video games and other things that do it for us. And, and, and I, I just remember mapping out fantasy lands, you know, like, when I read The Wizard of Oz, the book didn't have the map in it. I drew it myself. Of course you did. I can see that happening. It, you know, it's like in my community. How many people know that if you go to the back area of the produce station pottery, that there is a lavender plant that stands at least three foot high and it's about ready to bloom? Well, of course, not very many people. But for that <laughs> no, one don't. particular block, that could be what's in it. So I know you know of places where you're staying with your sister now. I know you know of places where you live. Um, and I know I could go back to my hometown of Geneva. And in my mind, I can close my eyes and I can see what that town looks like mm -hmm. as I know it now, but also as it was and what it could be. So well, I'd yeah, be the kind of person uh, that would draw the what it could be, but it's, it could it, be anything. It's just so it cracks me up. I think it was you. It, no, it Atlas Obscura. I love Atlas Obscura. Oh, so do I. Yeah, that's great. They great did this letter. whole thing about all of the Statue of Liberties that exist in the world. Guess what? The one in Danbury, they didn't have. Oh, yeah on the outskirts near the motor vehicle department, there's a little park that has a Statue of Liberty. I asked tons of people in, in Danbury if they knew about it. They had no clue. No clue. None. And when I've done walks where we go into, um, well, I don't want to get into a whole big race thing or diversity thing or all of the stuff that's going on right now, but Danbury claims to be very diverse, and yet um, they'll also claim to say Main Street only has places where you get rice and beans. My response to that, of course, is 
Well, Ecuadorian rice and beans, Colombian rice and beans. What kind of rice and beans? Do you know? Do you know the difference? And have you been to all of those places to taste the difference and to meet the folks who cook them? Well, the answer is, you know, it's like. But that's a, that's a great conversation to have to to not just to start thinking about diversity as we as particularly as white people. I think if we start thinking about what diverse what we think it is and what it really is and what it could be. Um, it helps move us off from that spot that's not the best spot to be in. You know, go to your local stores that are not stores you'd shop in. Start there. Go into a store in your neighborhood or in your town and go shop or eat in a place where you wouldn't normally go. Introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, yeah. in, in the walks that I, I did for some time, um, we stopped in at least four different restaurants, most of them not known. I chose them to be uh, ones that were basically mom and pop and all of that. And I remember um, there's a little plaza in Danbury that's Pakistani. Nobody I know goes there and shops or any of that kind of stuff. And so we went into a restaurant there and I had expected that people would get a taste of something. The owner of the place served a full course luncheon to the entire group that I was taking on the walk. Why? A brilliant man. Be because he was being paid attention to, he was being honored, and what was even better was every single person asked, well, what's this kind of food? How is this made? Did, you know, so he was able to explain to them a culture that they didn't know, but they never would have walked in there. And now they go back to eat there because there was something they liked, I'm quite sure. And they bring Absolutely. people and friends and family. Yeah. And that's how it begins. Oh, that's right? one of the things I love that when you, when you've talked about showing a town, I think this was one of the first things that impressed me about your work is you didn't just take people into spaces because they were interested in investing or buying. You invited the whole community. In the tour of empty buildings. Yes, absolutely. And so, oh, so I'm walking to, into a space. I'm interested in perhaps using it for something whether it's commercial, whether it's living, what, and I'm meeting the people around me who are saying, wow, I haven't seen this space. Wouldn't this be a really great place for this or for that? And so I'm suddenly getting a feel for the community, getting to know people and, 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 and at the same, getting the energy level of the, of the town sparking some interest in something new i mean it just i don't know anybody who does that except you guys and it, god bless you well thank you because we love our small towns and and we see the value and the 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 ability to be who you want to be in the town that you're in and to do the things you want to do and the difference you want to make you can do that in small towns you could do that anywhere it's if, a great thing to start in a small just... town <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. I so we have been talking for a little bit now okay um and i will continue this conversation with you when we're done recording but i want to put a challenge out you got me to thinking about uh oh uh oh yeah okay. yep yep and and i want um the people that listen to this whoever that may yes. be to um Take a look around you, whether if you're only able to look around your house, draw me a map of your house. If you're able to get out into the street around your neighborhood, draw a map either of what's there, and please no lines and street names and funky stuff like that. Um, 
right. all the street names are going to be changed anyway at that's this point. right that's right at this point they're changing town names um, <laughs> we'll go downtown and draw for me what you'd like it to look at, like and we don't need artists maybe you're not i'm thinking that i'm going to cut some pictures out and make mine with pictures that uh, yeah. i've drawn from that but I've cut it, out. It, it is things like we have we have without a huge amount of education removed a lot of things from downtowns for the wrong reasons like i hate going downtown and not having a place to sit right right and that's a simple thing to and do to draw why a is that who decided I can't sit there? I'll they think you. that, oh, uh, somebody's gonna lay there and sleep for the night. Well, you know, if we look in Danbury, for example, the statistics are those who are homeless are s such a small number that there's no reason to use that as an explanation that I can't go down and and watch people wander my downtown and so you know therefore there are empty stores there are this and that because i and and i'll say as an elder person i have no opportunity to go and spend an afternoon in my downtown because i don't have a place to just sit down and watch people walk by and maybe see somebody who i who i know and have a chat with them i don't have that <laughs> well, as far as the oh, homeless I'm person sorry. go ahead <laughs> as far as the homeless person in a small town sleeping on a bench who are we to not want to help that person first of all let's find this person either the help he or she needs or a place to sleep or whatever it is that they may need to move up and on through life. First of all, there's that. Um, second of all, rules are made to be broken. If there's a city code that's written that you can't put a bench in your downtown, we'll change the city code. Or you know what? Put the bench in and pay the fine anyway. Because the fine was written in the 20s and it's a $20 fine. That's generally what we see. Don't let those kind of things, those no. little tiny barriers stop you. Figure well, out how to go through, over, I, you around. You know, when we talk about the homeless, for example, and, and, and one of the very first things I did when I was working with what would be the equivalent of the business improvement district, and I was doing festival work and events and all of that, I know the names of every single homeless person on those streets. I personally know the names. I can say hello because I wanted to be sure that anything we did was protected. And they did for me. It's as simple as that. It really is. Just that people are human. Treat them like human beings. That's Everybody. right. And Everybody. then you get respected and then um you get protected and and then because of that the whole environment changes in a way that perhaps they will get what they need and everybody else gets what they need to okay so one more thing <laughs> what kind of drawing or uh, thing are you going to do what kind well, of you what? Have to, you have to participate. What kind of thing are you, but what community are you going to do an image of or draw? Oh my or? goodness. I'm going back to my hometown of Geneva, Iowa. I love that idea. So I'm I going back know. there. Uh, so wait, head. you're still in Iowa, yes? I am still in Iowa, yes. Okay. I could do blocks in Chicago. I could do any community I visited. I mean, I could do Portugal for that matter, or Scotland, but I'm going to do my hometown. Uh, uh, I know this is on air, but can, I, I'm going to I'm going to just throw this out. Okay. I almost was I was almost totally late to talk with you because. I've essentially 
been out of housing in Danbury for two years. Right. And, and I got a call from the housing department in Danbury to offer me an apartment in Danbury, which I can move back into and be back where I have a community. I, I don't know where, you know, uh, planets must have moved. So I think what would be really fun for me is to do a map of what I know that is there at that space. But remember, I've never lived there. I don't really know it well. Right. And then do a follow up layer map of what I find because I know I always find I I I I find, find things. things that sure. people just don't know. So I've given the challenge to you. Now I'm going to give it to who's ever listening. And, and 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 you know the reality is what would be really nice is to take all of those and you know maps are a big thing in galleries these days. And there's no reason why there couldn't be a little gallery in somebody's town that has all of these maps, maps on exhibition, perhaps when you're going to visit a town um, where there is an exhibition that suggests all of this so that it becomes a visual prompt for what you're going to tell people that they may like. be able to do with their that. town. I love that. And at some point, I'll figure out how to put some of those online too. So we're going to wrap this up. Yeah, figuring out. It took yeah. me a day to figure out how to get online with you. Sorry, new tablet, new everything. Uh, new it's you. quite all right. Oh, it's geez. quite all right. We cut your head off on most of it, but you know, you have beautiful eyes. So I want people to see <laughs> that anyway. It's awesome. So I, I wow. super apologize. I'm, I, I never was meant to be on a small screen. So, so here's my thought about all of that. It's in the conversation. It's not in the setting. We are having a wonderful conversation. That's good enough for me. And it's good enough well, for Well, you know, people. it wouldn't have been bad if it was over cocktails in Barcelona, but eh. <laughs> well, that's in the future. It's coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, to be Cameron. honest with you, I would be just as happy since I've met not met you face to face to do it in Geneva, Iowa. <laughs> Iowa. Because I bet you, if I met you in Geneva, Iowa, I'd be going, can we go down that street? I just and, have this feeling something down that street is where I want to go. And I'll be and I bet oh, I you I'd you find this. something yeah. for you you'd never saw before. For sure. Ted, thank you for your time today. Don't go anywhere. We're going to stop the recording. Everybody that's I am not, and watching. You're saying don't go anywhere during quarantine. It's so funny. Don't <laughs> go anywhere. Of course not. <laughs> Thank you, everybody.